The other day, I read that using artificial intelligence creates fewer carbon emissions than human labor for creating images or writing text. Rubbish, I thought. But, well, let's have a look. On the face of it, the idea that artificial intelligence creates fewer carbon emissions than humans seems ridiculous. Carbon emissions are primarily caused by energy needs, either during operation or production. The human brain doesn't have much going for it, but besides being edible, it's famously energy efficient compared to a computer. A typical human brain runs on about 20 watts of power, though the average is much lower among politicians. A super computer uses more like 20 megawatts. That's a million times more. All right, most artificial intelligences today don't run on the biggest of the big supercomputers, but we just saw in an early episode that they eat up huge amounts of energy. If you use AI to do as much as generate an image from a text prompt, that takes up about as much power as charging your phone in the ballpark of 3 watts, which... Um, is less than the 20 watts I just told you the human brain uses. Hmm. Okay, let's look at what they did in this paper. They compared the emissions of carbon dioxide caused by using artificial intelligence and humans to produce text or images. For the AIs, they counted the training phase as well as the operation. So, say, the energy that's eaten up when you ask Midjourney for a unicorn with sunglasses. On top of the power used during operation, they add a share of the total training emissions by dividing it through the expected lifetime query. For humans, they use the typical carbon intensity of living in different countries. From this, they then calculate the expected carbon emissions for the time that it takes the writer to produce a certain amount of text or a painter to paint a painting. They crunch the numbers and find that a typical US American needs about 100 to 1000 times more carbon dioxide per page written or image produced. Wow, that's indeed a big difference. The exact numbers depend both on which AI more model they use and where the human lives. They find, for example, that if you want to generate an image, then GPT is energetically quite wasteful compared to Midjourney. Then again, this isn't so surprising as it's just a bigger model. And if you outsource your tasks to India, that reduces the carbon footprint. Also not so surprising. I couldn't quite believe this, so I had a close look at the paper. To estimate the time, they used a self-evaluation from Mark Twain who says that his output is about 300 words per hour. I just checked the length of this text and it's roughly 400 words and it took me about 10 minutes to write. So maybe setting the quality level at Mark Twain might be putting the bar a little too high for the average internet content of today. But then again, that isn't going to make up for a factor of 100. What about the carbon emissions from producing the necessary hardware? They took this into account and also looked at possible later energy requirements for recycling. However, uh, they say that these contributions are orders of magnitude smaller in carbon intensity than the training and operation. So basically, it doesn't make any difference. OK, so science has spoken. AI is better than us. Well, not so fast. Data is all well and fine, but I'd like to carefully ask, what does it mean? Humans produce carbon dioxide emissions whether or not they write or paint. By giving the job to an AI, these emissions don't go away. They just add the AI on top. The reason human labor seems so carbon intensive is that a writer doesn't just write. A writer needs to keep its entire body alive, a body that's occasionally good for other things. An AI dedicated to a specific task doesn't have this entire overhead. I think a more sensible comparison would be to ask what's the difference in carbon intensity between a human who writes and a human who sits on a desk not writing. I suspect that the difference is so small as to be un measurable. That said, there's a bigger question behind this discussion, which is whether it's a good idea to invest into artificial intelligence if that'll increase carbon dioxide emissions. The answer depends on how much benefit you think will come out of it eventually. Personally, I think that energy demand is strongly tied to societal progress. The problem isn't the energy demand per se, but that at the moment the energy sources we use 
aren't environmentally sustainable. And of course, the reason that we use computers to take over certain tasks is to make space in our lives for doing something else, so that one day our video scripts will be entirely written by AI, and the footage of me speaking will be entirely produced by AI, and it'll be entirely watched by AI. And what was the point of that again? Yet another thing that AI has gotten incredibly good at is language translation. But did you know that studies show different languages activate different connections in the brain, especially if the grammar is different? This is why I'm trying to brush up my French with Babel. Etez-vous inhumé ou nous repos? I like Babbel because it's super easy to use. It's one of the most widely used language learning apps in the world, works on your phone or your browser and gets you to your goal quickly. Merci beaucoup. Their lessons are designed by language teachers and you can complete them step by step whenever you find the time. The best thing about Babbel is that it teaches real world conversation. For example, how to sort out travel problems or talk about business matters, stuff you actually need. And I have an amazing special offer for you today. If you use our link in the info below, you'll get 60% off your subscription. And don't worry if you don't like it, you have a 20 day money back guarantee. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.